This video is brought to you by Wish Pond. There are some rivalries that everyone knows. David versus Goliath, Tyson versus Lewis, or Empire versus the Republic. There's one that you might not have heard of, but will shape the future of e-commerce altogether. Shopify versus Amazon. Jeff Bezos' company wants to create the biggest online marketplace that is controlled by one company. Shopify, on the other hand, is the rebellion in this scenario. They want to decentralize e-commerce and enable anyone to launch an online store. By giving power to the individuals, Shopify has grown into the second largest e-commerce platform with nearly 2 million merchants. So, how did it emerge as the legitimate threat to Amazon's dominance? Join us as we break down Shopify's story and learn how the company started, who the founders are, and how they plan to grow the business in the coming years. Shopify's story starts in 2002 when Tobias Lutka moved across the world to Canada at the age of 22 to be with his future wife, Fiona McKean. Upon arrival, he faced a major problem. Without a degree, Lutka couldn't get a permit to work in Canada. While he couldn't get a 9 to 5, Tobias realized that starting a business could easily earn him money. It was time to bet on himself. He decided to combine his newfound hobby of snowboarding with his interest in e-commerce and start an online snowboard shop. Now, Luca didn't have a lot of business knowledge or capital, so he needed help to get things off the ground. Luckily, at a McKean family event, he met Scott Lake, who had startup experience. The two clicked, and in 2004, they founded the online snowboard shop, Snow Devil, with investment from Fiona's parents. You have to realize, this was at a time when launching an online store wasn't easy. Luca tried many e-commerce solutions to make it work, but they were all so bad it made his skin crawl. The straw that broke the camel's back was trying to make a custom design on Yahoo stores. It barely allowed Luca to change the background color of the top frame. This was the spark he needed. Luca got so frustrated that he decided to write the software to power his online store himself. Soon he realized that people were more interested in the software that powered it than the snowboards. People were saying, you know, it's really, really cool that you guys have this, uh, you know, Snow Devil, the snowboard store, but would you license the software? Mm. And then we sort of realized, well, maybe, maybe uh, helping other people go through this and building their stores might actually be a better business than, than, than selling snowboards. And this is sort of how we pivoted. But you can't pivot into a new startup with no capital. So Luca and Lake raised $200,000 from friends and family, including Luca's uncle and McKean's father. The next step was finding the technical founder. Luca went with his gut and recruited his friend, Daniel Winand, for the position. Finally, in 2006, after working on the software for a year, Shopify was launched. The tool allowed anyone to set up an online store in minutes. Shopify focused on features like customizable store templates, order tracking, inventory management, payment processing, and PayPal and credit card integration. A big turning point came two years after launch when Lake stepped down as CEO. This left Luca with the task of leading the company, a position he didn't want. Instead, he met with Silicon Valley venture capital firms to find someone else to fill the role, but had no luck. Eventually, angel investor John Phillips convinced him to take on the role by saying, you will never find anyone who will care about Shopify as much as you do, and so you should just give this a go. In the years that followed, Shopify would transform into an e-commerce pioneer. The platform empowered merchants by launching innovative solutions like its API or App Store. After nine years of massive organic growth, Shopify made its public debut on the New York Stock Exchange on the 21st of May, 2015, at a valuation of $2.1 billion. In the following years, Shopify continued to grow and widen its product offerings. Innovative solutions like Shopify Capital allowed merchants to get loans with minimal paperwork. This focus on the needs of direct-to-consumer businesses helped Shopify replace eBay as the United States' second largest e-commerce platform after Amazon by 2019. But it was the 2020 pandemic that had the biggest impact on Shopify's growth. It forced many businesses to go online while also giving customers even more choices. The result was an astounding 96% growth in revenue in Q3 2020 compared to the same period in 2019. 
Despite some challenges in the past, Shopify continues to grow with over 3.7 million websites using the platform. By January 2022, Shopify had reached a massive market capitalization of $141 billion, making it the world's 95th most valuable company. From 2016 to 2020, its annual revenue increased 6.5 times while generating $2.1 billion in revenue in the first two quarters of 2021, a 57% year-over-year -year increase. So how does Shopify generate all of this revenue? The answer is multiple sources. Its core subscription services account for 63% of total revenue, while its enterprise plan that costs over $2,000 per month brings in another 23%. The remaining 14% comes from apps, themes, domains, and Shopify Plus platform fees. So what does the future hold for Shopify? The platform continues to invest in new technologies that make it easier for its merchants to sell products such as Shopify Markets, which enhanced cross-border commerce, a no-fee money management platform called Shopify Balance, and TikTok Shopping, which lets consumers buy products directly from the app. And while not giving any specifics, Shopify has said growth will continue in a normalized fashion, if at a slower pace than during the 2020 boom. While there are reports that Amazon is working on a successor to Web Store in order to try and regain its lost opportunities, Luca welcomes the challenge, saying that, I think of Amazon as a worthy rival. If they knock it out of the park and make it super easy to start new businesses on it, then I'm like, I actually accomplished my mission. As a result of Luca's frustration with existing e-commerce tools and a pivot from his online snowboard shop, Shopify has grown to become the second largest e-commerce platform in the US. While its main rival, Amazon, has focused on its customers at the detriment of its sellers, Shopify's merchant-focused model has helped it become the platform of choice for businesses big and small that want to start selling online. That's it for our breakdown of Shopify. What do you think of this e-commerce platform? Do you think they have what it takes to be Amazon? What company would you like us to break down next? Let us know in the comments.